All right, gamers, the Indigo Disc DLC is out, and that means it is tierless time. So today we're going to go through every new and returning Pokemon that could be competitively relevant in VVGC, and we're going to give them a ranking. So let's get right into it. And of course, just so you know, these are all for regulation F, the first format where they will be legal. All right, starting nice and easy. Venusaur is going to be an a tier Pokemon, but this isn't until Groudon comes out. The reason I say that is because Tornadus Tailwind is everywhere and I'm always packing Rain Dance. The you need your Sunsetter to be just a genuinely powerful Pokemon in and of itself, something like Groudon, and Torkoal just isn't it. So we'll go in A tier. But once we have a powerful Sunsetter like Groudon, nice. Uh, Blastoise is going in D. Uh, it was pretty good uh, in Dynamax formats because G Max. Cannonade. It is by far the weakest of the Kanto starters in its base form, and there's just not a reason to use it over other water types like Urshifu or Primarina or Araquanid. Vileplume is Venusaur at home. Uh, I don't really think it does very much at all that Venusaur doesn't do, so we'll put it in C. Tentacruel's gonna go in C tier as well. You know, it's pretty bulky, extremely specially bulky, has Acid Spray, has pretty strong utility moves, but that's really not enough for a Pokemon to be good nowadays. It needs more than just have a few powerful support moves. It needs to have some kind of broken ability or some kind of insane stat, and that just isn't the case for Tentacruel. Same thing here with Dodua, with Dotrio. That's gonna go in, in D tier. It's just a fast flying type that sets Tailwind. A moderately fast, moderately hard hitting flying type there's a million of those so it's going in d tier dugong actually has a niche in that it gets both fake out and perish song that being said its stats are terrible and it's just not going to do anything but it does have something unique about it our Caledon is going to go in A tier. Now, I thought our Caledon was really bad at first, just because it's kind of wishy-washy with the way its stats are distributed. But the more I think about it, uh, I think it serves a role. It's a pretty good Assault Vest Pokemon. Uh, Stamina Body Press is pretty powerful, uh, especially if you pair it with a redirector like a Moongus or something else that gives it more longevity, like Grassy Dirt and Rillaboom. So I do think we'll see it. And its other ability, Stalwart, is pretty strong as well. So I'll put it in A tier. Hydrapple it has pretty good special attack, pretty good bulk. It's very slow, so it could be like a Trick Room Pokemon. Come on, it even gets your generator, which is pretty strong. So I wonder if it'll be getting in singles because of that. And once again, doesn't have anything super unique about it. I mean, there's a lot of powerful Trick Room Pokemon. There's a, there's a weird amount of good grass types right now. Amoongus, Rillaboom, Ogre Pond, all four forms. So he's going to go in B. Gouging Fire is interesting. He has pretty good bulk. Fire and Dragon actually is pretty good defensive typing because they complement each other very well. And Fire and Dragon is a good combination of stabs. But its attacking stat is a little low at only 115. Having access to D Dance and having good typing, the only two things this really has going for it. Uh, the problem with that is there are so, so many very powerful fire types in the format. Like, for example, Sui and Arcanine, uh, Incineroar, uh, Fire Ogre Pond. So it has a lot of, a lot, a lot of competition, especially since, especially since this guy seems to want to be an attacker and not some kind of utility piece. So we're going to put him in B tier. Raging Bolt's going in A. I would have put him in S like a week ago. So Raging Bolt is extremely powerful uh, at dealing with specifically Tornadus and Urshifu. It's a thunderclap, as I talked about in one of my previous videos. Uh, but the problem is that Raging Bolt kind of gets punished by solid play by the, by the opponent, and that's not what po that's not the kind of Pokemon you want on your team. It's weak to Fluttermane, a uh, problem that Gouging Flame doesn't have, and it's not super good into Rillaboom, which you should basically 100% expect to see on the Tornadus, uh, the Tornadus Urshi teams. So it goes in A, it's still strong, bright stats, bulky, hits hard, but it's not the end-all be-all tailwind counter that people are making it out to be. Uh, next we have Iron Boulder. He is pretty fast, he is pretty strong, yeah, he's got pretty good attack, he's pretty fast, uh, he has pretty okay physical bulk, really good special bulk, That's a few problems. Number one, hyping sucks. Rock Psychic is just really mopey typing. Again, competition for other with other good rock types, like for example, Sunni and Arcanine. That being said, he does have a really, really, really strong signature move, Mighty Cleave. It's a 95 base power, 100% accurate rock type move that hits through Protect. We've seen with the Urshifu's how broken hitting through Protect is. Uh, this move isn't as strong, you know, as Surging Strikes or as Wicked Blow, but it's still a very, very powerful, and rock type is extremely good offensively, if not defensively. So I think we'll see him. I'll put him like the middle, like towards the front of B tier, because I think we will see him, whereas I think these two uh, are kind of in between if we'll see them or not, but strong Pokemon. Uh, Iron Crown, easy A tier. It This thing is one point faster than Urshifu, has a good special attack stat, and gets access to Expanding Force. That is extremely powerful. Expanding Force is a broken move. Only thing really keeping it balanced so far has been that the only way to play it is to have to go for a turn of setup with Follow Me Trick Room stuff, because Armor Rouge has really mediocre speed. But Iron Crown doesn't have that problem, because it is fast, 
Uh, it can get even faster naturally with booster energy. And it's really bulky too. I mean, this thing is kind of hard to knock out, even though it's typing is only okay defensively. It's, oh no, Steel and Psychic is good defensive typing and has good bulk. It's hard to knock out, hits fast. It's special attack stats only okay, uh, but because it's such a powerful move, it doesn't super, super matter. So easy A tier, we'll see him a lot. But for Incineroar, he would be S tier. Incineroar slows him down. Tropicos isn't going to be legal because uh, it's, it's legendary. So I'll put him in here, but I do think he'll be quite good. This thing, I'm not even going to say its name because I heard people getting DMCA striked by uh, by the Pokemon company about him, but he's going, he's going in here. The two, the two executors are like fine grass type trick room Pokemon. Uh, you can do like funny harvest stuff with them. I'm putting them both in C tier because they do, they, they both have a niche and they're both like pretty okay in Urshifu, uh, but they're just like not high enough power level to be playing with, honestly. Uh, the Hitmons are going in D tier. They don't do anything special. Uh, same thing with Lapras. Rhyhorn, like Eviolite Rhyhorn is like a thing people try to play sometimes, but we, we're we getting beyond cute stuff like that, unfortunately. Uh, Meganium, the worst starter Pokemon. I was really hoping they'd do something for Meganium in this format and or this generation, and they just didn't change anything. So sorry, Meganium. For Alligator goes in D tier. Uh, it's a sheer forest life for Pokemon, which is you know, very strong, but why are you running physical attacking water type that isn't Urshifu Rapid Strike or Araguanid. Go away. Uh, Lantern, kind of mopey, like it gets, get Volt Absorb or Lightning Rod. I think it gets Lightning Rod. No, Volt Absorb, Water Absorb, Illuminate. These aren't abilities that make a mediocre stat Pokemon good enough, so sorry. Well, it's even worse than I thought, actually. This thing has terror. This thing's awful. A uh, Belossum, fine chlorophyll Pokemon, cute. No reason to run it over the other options. Just none. Granbull is a S. No, I like Granbull a lot. It's a very cool Pokemon. Uh, you know, you would think in theory a fairy type with a, a fairy type, the, the, one of the best defensive types in the game, with Intimidate would be a strong Pokemon. Unfortunately, its highest stat, it only has one stat that's over 100 with 120 attack. Really, really mopey special defense. Only okay physical defense. Slow. It's not good. Skarmory, D tier. It's not, this isn't singles. Setting spikes isn't doing something. Being bulky isn't doing something. You need to be impacting the board. And Skarmory is just not very good at doing that. I'm gonna put Kingdra in, like, in between, like, high end of C tier. It is a fast swift swim Pokemon with great coverage. Water and Dragon is great defensive typing right now because it's good against Urshifu, Sing Urshifu Rapid Strike. It's also terrible defensive typing right now because it's very bad into Flutter Main. And if you're running a Rain Abuser, it should honestly probably just be Urshifu Rapid Strike. So he's going in C tier. Though, let's run a Calc. Okay, so Life Orb, Max at Special Attack, Modest, Hurricane from Kingdra, Can Oko, Urshifu Rapid Strike. That is something. Uh, is it good enough? Probably not. Porygon 2 is going in A tier. Uh, he is a little weaker than he would normally be because he relies on Eviolite for his bulk, and Incineroar has now gotten the move knockoff, which means the ability to remove Eviolite will be extremely common, but he's just extremely bulky, uh, extremely good at dealing good, consistent damage with the bolt beam combination, can set Trick Room, gives himself sustainability with Recover. He is a very, very strong piece that is great at damage trading, always has been. I'm hoping always will be because I really like playing with his Pokemon, so he's going in A tier. Smeargle, A tier for now, but will be S tier in in restricted formats. The reason I say that is because Smeargle is a very powerful Pokemon. Uh, it can learn every move in the game with very, very few exceptions. And that's just kind of broken, uh, especially when you can mix and match some of the powerful new signature moves that we've been getting, like Decorate and uh, Crafty Shield, those kinds of those kinds of moves. But he usually, he does that role the best when there's like extremely powerful, like Protect the King style pieces uh, in the format. Like for example, Smeargle was very strong when Xerneas was legal. So when we get to the restricted formats and we get our super powerful, like, you know, queens basically that we have to protect, Smeargle will be very powerful. Until then, he's just gonna be a guy that pops up on Wigger teams. Hitmontop is a cool Pokemon. It is strong. It does a lot of things well. Intimidate, Fake Out, all of them. Incineroar does too. When Incineroar has a better utility. Hitmontop's a C tier. There will be times where maybe there's some extremely specific reason you want it over Incineroar, but those times will be very, very few and very far between. Uh, Raikou's gonna go in C tier. He's fine. He's got like pretty good bulk. Okay, special attack, pretty fast. Um, But he just kind of, he's, he's just kind of a guy that like either sets up or just clicks like good coverage moves. Like he doesn't provide a lot of utility. He doesn't hit super hard. Uh, So we're gonna put him in C tier. But he did almost top eight worlds during Sword and Shield. So maybe, maybe he's better than I'm giving him credit for. I'm gonna put Entei in A. Entei as an inner focus extreme speed Pokemon like Ala Dragonite uh, is extremely powerful. But I also think his like secondary option for you don't want to spam E-Speed is way stronger than Dragonite's because it has access to Sacred Fire, which is a very, very, very strong move. Uh, and you don't have to terrestrialize to do it the way you do with Dragonite's 
flying stat moves. So he's going on A tier. Inner focus, extreme speed user, good with Chin Pao. Might be a little awkward because he overlaps on fire typing and incineroar, but just, just, just gonna be strong. Speaking's going in A. Bulky, set up Pokemon. It can set up Tailwind. It can set up Calm Mind. It can, do, it can do Icy Wind spam. It can play support with things like Snarl. It just has a lot of utility and any defensive Pokemon like Suicune gets a lot better with access to Rascalization. So A tier. Lugia is banned, uh, but usually not very good. Same with Ho-Oh. Uh I'm gonna put Sceptile in C. And the reason I'm putting it in C is because it got access to Shed Tail, which is a really strong move. But beyond that, there's really not that much it does that's super, you know, tasty. It just kind of does okay stuff, you know, cute, unburdened stuff. But Shed Tail's a strong move, so you got to respect that. And I believe he's now the fastest Shed Tail user. No, he's actually one point slower than uh, Cyclozar, so he's... Eh. Blaziken, there's just better fire types. Like, speed boost, cute. Yeah, we're not playing Gen 4 singles. If that's not the broken thing it used to be, and especially not in VGC. Swampert, oh! I'll put him like high C tier. C tier is like, I can give you a reason to run it. D tier is like, what are you doing, man? Swampert is okay. Um, you know, water ground's good typing, pretty bulky, doesn't really do anything super special. Like if you want to run like a silly pledge team, he'd probably be the water type you use, but that's really all I can say about that. Plus and Minin, don't play them. Don't play Flygon, Flygon just doesn't do anything well. A uh, Metagross I'm putting in high B tier. Metagross has been kind of falling off the on power level scaling recently, but it gets access now to Heavy Slam, which is a very, very powerful stab move for it. Uh, and now it has Psychic Fangs, which is also very good for it. And the other thing is Metagross usually wants to run Assault Fest. Lately, our Assault Fest user of choice has been Iron Hands, but Assault Fest Iron Hands lines up really, really poorly into Incineroar. Uh, so it might be that Assault Fest Iron Hands starts to fall off and we see more and we have more options for our Assault Fest user again. And if that's the case, Metagross is a pretty solid option, especially since it has Clear Body, which means it isn't going to have the same issues with Intimidate and Cycling and Parting Shot Cycling. Regirock, Regice, Registeel, all weird, fine, bulky Pokemon. I think Regirock, Regice, and Registeel all have a thing you can try with them. Regirock and Registeel are okay Iron Defense Body Press Pokemon, and now with the Snow Buff, I feel like Regice might be pretty powerful as like a Combine Sweeper, but even then, these all require a lot of setup, end up with Pokemon that have pretty common weaknesses, uh, so C tier. Uh, the Lotties are extremely good. I'm gonna put Lottie Oss and S tier and Lottie O and A tier. Uh, and the reason for that is because they both got a huge buff. Both of their signature moves, the uh, Mist Ball and Luster Purge, got a 15 BP increase, meaning they do a lot more damage now. Uh, they're pretty good with Rasmalization. They're good Tailwind supports for like balancey teams that don't want to commit to something like Tornadus. Uh, and Psychic and Dragon coverage is pretty okay right now, actually, because Psychic lets them hit Urshifu and Dragon lets them hit things like Raging Bolt and all the other new dragons. So, pretty powerful. The Deoxys forms are not legal. Cranidos and Bastiodon don't really do anything. Actually, did Bastiodon get body press? It does! Okay. So, Bastiodon a has a very hard-hitting body press. Cranidos is... Watch the False Wipe video about why having a high attack set doesn't make you a good Pokemon. Uh, Rhyperior, so fine, fine C-tier Pokemon. He exists. He sure does. That's kind of it. Uh, he's fine, bulky, trick room, sweeper, but we have so many of those. These two are actually going in B-tier. And the reason for that is they got Follow Me Back. Now, I'm not sure if these two or their pre-evolution with Eviolite are better Follow Me users, but Follow Me on a Pokemon that has access to an ability that causes status condition on contact, like Flame Body or Static, is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, it's really interesting, especially since these two both can have, like, Follow Me and, like, an okay attack stat, like Special Attack for Magmortar and Attack for Electivire. So you can run them in a way that they can actually threaten certain things that they don't want to follow me away and um, just be bulky. So B tier for these two. Horicons Z is going in C tier. It hits really hard. That's all it does. It's very frail. Um, the only time it's ever been really good was when you used a Dynamax plus Friend Guard Follow Me to make it super bulky. A much different format than we're playing right now. So C tier. I'll put Superior in C tier. Um, Contrary Leaf Storm is very strong, but it's just kind of slow and hard to set up. Yeah, it's base special attack stat is only 75. So that first Leaf Storm isn't really doing that much damage, even if it's even if it is 130 base power and stab. So putting that in C tier. If somebody can figure it out, awesome. Not gonna be me. I don't know what Embor does, but I imagine this for a reason. Same thing with Substrika. Uh, Excadrill, I'll put in B tier. It's a strong Pokemon. Excadrill Tyranitar was, was dominant uh, during Sword and Shield for a long time. It's probably past its prime right now, but it's a very powerful sand, sand abuser, so I'm not gonna put it all the way down to C tier. Whimsicott is an easy A tier Pokemon. Um, It is fast. It has Prankster Encore, Prankster Tailwind, Charm, Fake Tears, blah, 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 blah. Very fast. Very fast. Fairy Grass is very good typing. It actually competes with Tornadus because it can taunt Tornadus before it moves because Whimsicott is faster. 
I expect to see a lot of Twimsicott, though I do think we'll still see more Torn than Whims than the natural synergy between Torn and Urshifu with Torn hitting the grass type Urshifu doesn't like. So A tier. Uh, next is Scrafty. He's going in D tier. Scrafty is a good Intimidator. He does powerful things. He is way too late to the party. We have Incineroar, we have Suleon Arcanine, we have Lander Asterion. All these Pokemon are way stronger than Scrafty. If this was a regional decks format, I would be more than happy to play a whole bunch with Scrafty, but not here. Uh, Chinchino goes in D tier. It's like, it's a cute skill link Pokemon. I, in my very first regional, I almost lost to one actually, fun fact, uh, because I didn't know it got knockoff and it almost destroyed my Kyrex Shadow Rider, but just nothing worth looking at here. Runicle is going in C tier. He is a fine, slow Trick Room user and he gets Expanding Force, which is a very powerful move, but there's like three or four slow Trick Room users with Expanding Force now, so not that unique. Galvantula doesn't really do anything worthwhile, in my opinion. Same thing with Golurk. I'm gonna put the the Legends guys in C tier. They hit pretty hard, or at least like Terrakian hits pretty hard, and they do have a cute beat-up combination, but that was way stronger during Dynamax, and they just like, they're all fighting types, and if you're competing with Iron Hands or Shifu, you gotta be bringing something better to the table than I hit pretty hard. All of these aren't legal. Meowstic Mail gets access to Prankster and Skill Swap, which is a really cute thing you can comp combine with uh, with Amoongus to have like Prankster Spores. There's a few Pokemon that can do stuff like that. It has access to Fake Out. It's pretty okay, you Prankster Utility Pokemon, but Prankster Utility Pokemon that aren't spamming Tailwind have been trending down this generation just because there are so many Pokemon that are immune to Thunder Wave or immune to other speed control options you get those Prankster Pokemon. So we're gonna put him in C tier, towards the top end of C tier. Uh, and similarly with Yastic Female, it's just like it doesn't have access to those Prankster abilities instead it has competitive, uh, which means it's competing with Pokemon like King Gambit, uh, with Pokemon like Grass Ogre Pond, with Pokemon like, like even Galarian Articuno uh, as a deterrent for Intimidate. Just, it's just not nearly the same power level as the Pokemon, so D tier. Next we have Malamar, another D tier Pokemon. Malamar's whole thing for a long time was contrary superpower. That's not even the best, he's not even the best Pokemon at doing that anymore because now we have an Amorous Incarnate that can do that. You can do cute like topsy turvy turby stuff to flip a Dondozo's attack stats, uh, which would have been really cool in like Regulation A or something when Dondozo was everywhere and hard to beat, but doesn't really offer anything unique. Incineroar is an S tier Pokemon. I would explain it to you, but instead you can watch this video uh, that I made that's like 10 minutes long about why it's good because there's a lot of reasons. Primarina goes in B tier, I would say. I don't think it's actually very strong. Uh, it's actually, it isn't bulky enough to actually be the Urshifu check we all want it to be. It takes, I think it actually can get Oko'd by Taros Water, Mystic Water, Urshifu in the rain, which is not what you want for your Pokemon that's supposed to beat Urshifu, uh, but it's still a pretty powerful Pokemon. Water type, Hyper Voices, thanks to Liquid Voice and Powerful Moon Blast are all great. It has access to good utility moves like Parish Song. We'll see it. It's not gonna be great, but we'll see it. Uh, Trumby? Two cannon? I don't know what this thing does. I think it gets skill link. I'm putting it in D tier. I feel like if it was good. Araquanid is actually going in A tier. It is a extremely surprisingly scary Pokemon. It hits extremely hard thanks to Water Bubble, its its signature ability. And when you combine that with Terastalization, it does a crap ton of damage. And the thing that makes this one okay, compared to like other water types that I've said, eh, don't run them while you're running, Urshifu, while you're running the episode of Urshifu, is that Araquanid is slow enough that he is exclusively a Trick Room option, and he's a very powerful, powerful Trick Room option. I'm putting Comfy in like mid B tier. It's thanks to its ability triage. It has access to some really, really interesting things it can do. You know, priority healing with like flower healing is very powerful. Uh, you can activate weakness policy with draining kiss and other like low damaging uh, healing moves. It gets trick room, it gets helping hand. It gets a lot of very powerful utility moves. Uh, so expect to see it. Minior just doesn't have the stats. Alchemy is a pretty interesting Pokemon. Um, it gets access to decorate, which is very, very powerful signature move. It gets access to Aroma Veil, Aroma Veil and Sweet Veil. So you can either make sure it and its partner can't be taunted and stuff like that, or you can make sure it, its partner can't fall asleep, both of which are extremely valuable things to be able to do. But I think that a lot of times, if you want to decorate Pokemon, Smeargle will end up being better nowadays, just because you can have whatever utility you want on him. But that's not necessarily true, because his ability is also pretty good. So maybe we'll see a little experimentation. Don't expect to see one every tournament you play in, but be on the lookout for it. Um, I made a whole, an another Pokemon I made a whole video about, over you know, over here, of why Eviel Hydraladon just won't be good. It just doesn't offer anything worth doing. And Regigigas, we're gonna put in C tier. Um, He's okay. He can do really cool, you know, really cool co combo with him where you use the Pokemon Weezing and it's really neutralizing gas to turn off Slow Start because with Slow Start, Regigigas is terrible. And now you have a 670 base stat Pokemon. Is that good enough? Probably not. Often, a lot, every time this has shown up, except for when you could use Dynamax, it's been pretty niche, but it exists. 
Uh, it's definitely cool, and I'd love to be proven wrong on that one. So that is every new Pokemon in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC ranked. Uh, let me know what you think. If you think my, my opinions are wrong or if they're right. I think I have a few, a few hot takes in here. Uh, and let me know. Talk to you soon.